Hi guys, this this is after the 2023 Pasadena Regionals. Here we have the 24K captain with his profile. This is the Golden Boy Hector. Golden Boy, I like that. Um, so guys, I decided to play a Runic Eldritch for this uh, regional. I kind of just want to not play a meta deck. I really didn't want to play Kashir. I didn't want to play Spry. I didn't want to play... Uh, uh, the last regional I had played, I played a Sprite uh, Life Twin Runic, and it was fun. I got 11th place. Uh, I won like 6 1 1 or something like that. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to play that. I wanted to play something that would be kind of surprisingly if I do top 8 and I kind of got to get on the map. And I did want to play something revolving Runic. So I decided to bring back the deck that I love the most and the deck that I just feel the most comfortable with, and that's Eldritch. I've always loved that. I've played it since 2020. And I wanted to give the two engines together a try since they have some cards that I can play that does not hurt either of the engines. Skill Dream, like example, one of them. But yeah, I had fun. Um, my record was seven and two. Uh, fortunately, there was so many one ones. I thought there was going to be a possibility, maybe. But there was just so many uh, X one ones and X two twos. But I got twenty third overall. But I'm still very happy. A uh, seven and two record uh, with LH in twenty twenty three. I'm very happy about that. Um, I want to give a shout out to my teammates. I want to give a shout out to uh, my friend Sean who let me borrow all the Runic cards. Uh, so this is gonna go on um, two other YouTube channels. So Inspire TCG and Cyberhorn. I mean, I'm gonna send it to them. Um, they asked me for the profile. So I'm going to send it to them and also make sure you guys like and subscribe to our uh, brand new channel that we just started. Uh, it took long enough, right? A whole year, but um, 24K Duelist, make sure you guys like, subscribe. We're going to give more deck profiles, more balance predictions, pack openings. We're going to go through um, a lot of things that we're going to do in the channel. So make sure you guys uh, definitely stay tuned for that. The next video you're going to see is Pina Bar opening uh, two Cyberstorm um, boxes. So we actually got that going. Um, but with that, uh, with further ado, let's get to the football. So I play uh, two Golden Lords, uh, standard, right? Um, I almost thought about playing a third because, you know, Beastles is a card and something like that. Um, but, I mean, it didn't really come up. It was it was fine at two. Uh, I did play four branded matchups, but even then, if they banish one, they'll have to resolve both of the Beastles. Um, and once they banish one, I just have to play more conservatively on how to use the other. So it was fine. Two was perfectly fine. I play the Curse Eldland. Um, by the way, in case you guys see the names, they're foreign, so sorry about that, but, um, I play the Triple Sanguine. I play the Two Hawk to go with that. Curse L Land, it allows me to search the Golden Ore or the Golden Land, and it comes up to my Runic cards, too. I'll show you guys later. And then I play the Triple Conk. So, it's a pretty standard, uh, Eldritch and, uh, Eldritch lineup here, as you guys know. So, why were you not running that of the Counter Trap? Um... I'm like, wait, did I play my counter trap? I actually was playing the counter trap, which is hero one. Actually, good thing you reminded me. I don't want to show that towards the very end. Um, this is actually one of the best cards throughout the whole thing. Um, I'm surprised that I didn't play it that way any sooner. But the fact that I can search that with uh curse um the Eldland was really good. But also with runic, any of my runic cards allowed me to fix my hands with the Eldritch. So if I opened up double Sanguine, my Hugin discard was going to be a Sanguine. That just became a Golden Land. If I open up double Golden Land, obviously like Quaker or double Conk, right? Let's just say I opened up double. I can use this to pitch with Hugin and that Conk just became a Sanguine. So that's how I was able to rotate. Unlike pure, where you just brick if you draw two golden lands or if you draw two sanguine, that doesn't do anything. But with the runic, with Hugin effect of discard, um, it allowed me to fix that. Oh, if that okay. makes sense. So it was pretty cool. That was cool. Sometimes they would like imper my Hugin, and then I didn't even care because that's not even what I was trying to do. I already had like fountain in hand. I was just trying to pitch it so that like I can you know just like fix my hands. So with that being said, against your branded matchups, do you feel like the Golden Land was a good choice to be able to tech in for against those matchups? Yeah, a uh, Golden Land Forever was just honestly for the blowout. I just didn't want to get like even lead. Um, another thing good about this deck is you don't have to worry about Lightning Storm. You don't have to bar worry about Harpy's Feather Duster because you have Hugin. That's something in the pure variants and other variants. You just lose two. Uh, Lavin loses two of those things as well. Um, in this one, you just have to worry about banishment, right? So just worry about Cyclone and you have to worry about... Um, evenly but honestly you hit cyclone against a runic elegy deck it's not enough you're gonna have to hit it with an evenly and this is what this was for so it's fine all right um we're gonna go with the runic lineup it's gonna be the two fountain 
So pretty standard, right? Then we got the, the tip cracked. Then we got what we'll search is that the freezing curses. This was the best card against branded. I re I realized that um, as long as I negate their stuff until I get to my skill drain, then they just lose, and that's why they weren't able to like pretty much keep up with me. Uh, freezing curses. Triple Destruction, this is what I use against Kashira Birth. Um, I didn't go off until I made sure that I could resolve this to pop through Birth. And that's why I was able to play through that. Uh, triple fa Flashing Fire. This is also good against Cash, but it's also just a generic good uh, pop, as you guys know. Um, and then Banish 2. Um, a thing to know is that once I have Freezing, um, you cannot no longer use the Freezing to negate if you have Skill Drain up on the field. So you just use that to summon. Or use it for like the the lord fodder lord send you end up eventually getting so much advantage that so much comes fodder honestly um i also played the two slumbers um it came up uh, obviously it's the best it's one of the best cards when you turn zero because you're able to like use the tip to search fountain and then um or use a, one of the other ones to special summon and then you go slumber and then you end up drawing two or three cards so it's really good for turn zero um the cards that are non engine for either or or are technically are is as you guys know I play a triple skill drain. That's not a shock to anybody, right? So triple skill drain. Um, Rune can play this smoothly and Eldish can play this smoothly. So why not, right? Um, this was broken. Uh, honestly, if this ever gets hit, this kind of just kind of kills the deck, but this is fine. I played two summon limit. I wanted to play three, but because I'm continuously drawing like every turn off, um, off Fountain, I didn't want to draw multiples of it. The only card that I don't mind drawing multiples of is Skill Drain, because it's like such a like powerhouse, because once you have your Runic and Eldritch engine going and you have Skill Drain, it's so broken. But Summon Limit, um, once uh, some decks can actually start playing around it, or just having doubles just feels really bad. Um, also, Skill Drain, sometimes they'll go like Effect, then they'll try to book a moon. You know, they're gonna try to chain so that that way their stuff resolves. I know when they go effect under skill drain, they're trying to do something. So that I'll wait them, they'll go book a moon. And I'll like, do, you know, chain the other skill drain. Or like, you know, like, oh, I'll be working like that. Um, I also play a uh, two goals in match. Uh, Hugin is light, a lot of the extra deck is light, and then all the Eldritch cards are light. So you can actually go Hugin. That's why I didn't want to play Rivalry. I feel like Gozen was just really good. It hits Math Mac, it hits. Um, Kashira, it hits Flunderese for some people are playing that. It hits Sprite. And I feel like it just hits a lot of decks all around. There was even times when it, it weirdly enough hit Branded because they started off with like a light and then they were like, it was just awkward for them sometimes. Um, or I left them when they were like on a fire. The, the few, it was just weird sometimes for them. But obviously this wasn't for Branded, but it still had like some uh, situations where it came up. My other cards that are more like interactive was like to Torrential Tribute. I decided to play two of them. I decided to play two Punishment. And I just decided to play two Solemn Strike. So I played two Solemn Strike, two Punishment, and two Torrential. I didn't want to play three. I didn't have room for three. If not, I will maximize each and every one of these. But um, I, it's a 41 card deck. Um, Solemn Strike is so good under Summon Limit. Because even negating the Summon, it still counts. Punishment with Summon Limit is also really good. Torrential with Summon Limit it's also really good. So any cards that these paired up with Summon Limit is really good. But they're also good on their own. Um, also, a Solemn Strike for the Beastials came up a lot and also you guys know that um a rice heart is a mandatory effect so they can't not use it and i get to solemn strike that as well so i definitely did that for that um with that being said too um i do know that sometimes some of the matchups do come up to where you're going second how much of these were like were dead cards for you especially when they already gone into some uh, and especially after having to do some limit too Right. So the reason I decided to play more of the runic and then I didn't want to play the pure was because with pure, you're kind of forced to have even these or golems or weird stuff like that in the main. You can't really do the set five pass. That just doesn't really work not that much anymore. Um, Again, some deck it does. Um, which with that being said, I was hoping to like any, a lot of running cards going sec, uh, going second would just kind of help me interact with the whole board. And then once they kind of bait out all the negates and stuff like that, setting any of these, right? So if you, when you look here, if you have to, if you go goals in match and they try to negate, you can solemn strike them. If you go torrential tribute by summoning one of your golden lands or, or any of your runic fusions, and then you try to go Torrential, and then they try to negate, you have Skill Drain. So Torrential, Punishment, and Solemn Strike paired up with the Skill Drain or Gozen 
you kind of just break their whole board and now they're forced to play with my probably fountain that i have two interactions there and then i'm going to draw two more and then you know you better kill me if not my follow-up is going to be literally insane and then it just that's how i was able to do i was able to have so many interactions with the runic and the eldritch it wasn't like too crazy if i put up a floodgate you're kind of just losing because you have evenly Okay, then I just win because I literally have Hugin protection. Uh, under skill drain, though, it does negate the Hugin, so you kind of have to play it smart. There was a lot of times that I was uh, playing around the lightning storm manually, so I would like kind of negate other stuff with freezing curses before I would even flip up my skill drain. But you kind of just have to be kind of like smart on how you play your cards. Um, honestly, it does have a helmet aspect to it, to where I could just flip something and I win. Um, but you can literally mess up um, some stuff by uh, punishment. You cannot go into the extra. You have to be smart on how you use punishment. But I just think punishment is such a good toolbox that you have all this extra deck that you're not using. You're not playing pop cards right, in this deck. So you have all this extra deck that you want to use the, the cards that are available to you, which I'm going to go right now into the extra deck so you guys can see. Um, as you guys see, I have the two Entis. There was no need for a third. Um, I play the one Lina, which is pretty cool. Um, the Lina is obviously I can summon a light from their grave. Um, but it, it just was mostly just to kind of get uh, two of the golden lands out of the out of the board. Um, I played two Link Spider. Uh, never really came up honestly. Played these came up a few times and they were just two gold the golden lands I go into this just to apply more pressure and a uh, higher attack. I played the one Gustav match. This just this was actually came up a few times just so I can get uh back my golden lord back into the grave even under skill drain i would summon this detach and under skill drain and then they would be confused but i just want to get golden lord back in grave and then have a 3500 beater and then a, a 3k beater so i have the two garuras obviously for punishment and then i have the one that pitches it in case i'm playing like strong monsters like some of the kishira monsters i can't just regular guru i have to go into this and to that i only played one though because um if they hit this yeah, I can no longer do the Garuda pop, but I still have the Gustav Max, which is a strong monster enough to still have a good enough to pop. So, But I can honestly just cut any of these if I wanted to and play another one of this. That's fine. I play the three Hugin. Uh, very important. It's actually one of the most key cards and components into the deck because the discard. Honestly, guys, the, disc, the discard was what kind of just gets the whole deck going. Um, going into Hugin every time just to discard, not even for Fountain. People just need to give out. Like they would ash it or they would just do other stuff. And I like, I wouldn't even care. It was just about that discard because I would discard my Golden Lord. And now I can summon Golden Lord on turn zero by sending any of my other cards. And if it was a Sanguine that I had, that becomes a Golden Land. And I fully had like, ro I had rotation on turn zero. I had like Eldritch moves turn zero, which is something that in pure, it's hard to do. You just have to hope you draw it like perfectly. But in, in this deck, it kind of molds to it. And anything extra that you have is literally just drawing from Fountain. It's literally just extra interactions. So it's like, I feel like I'm still playing full pure Eldritch starting from turn zero, but I'm also uh, generating draws with Fountain every turn. So it was just so fun. I also played the, the Gary and I played the Munin. Um, going into Gary into battle is pretty cool. I go stand my main, enter battle, activate a runic uh, card, put this in attack, run into something, sure I'll lose some life, affect the Gary, pop Baron, Baron negate, end of battle, evenly match. So people will be like, why would you play runic and evenly match? But I did that. I just entered battle and I went into the Gary, I baited out the negate that they had and then I went evenly match at the end of the battle because I don't have a board. I lost my Gary. So oh, it's pretty cool. Wow. So you just baited out with the Yeah, negates. exactly. Yeah. And I I'm like, oh I'll skip my next battle phase, but at that point I already resolved the evenly match. So that was pretty cool. Um Union came up so many times. I almost played uh, multiples of it, but it was no need. Um some people um they don't want to scoop, so they want to really grind out this deck. And I'm like, I'm not in a rush. You kind of have to force yourself to beat me fast, or you have to scoop if you don't want to go into time. Um I play slow and I play control, so I'm going to be fine. If we go into time, I'm going to make sure that my unit resolves. I'm going to be getting a thousand and I'm not going to let you get to like what you have to get to. So um, there's a lot of situations. If your opponent does not want to scoop, you want to play this deck, you'd be like, oh, but it doesn't kill fast enough. It's OK. It's a good thing. You're going to end up winning in time. You're not worried about that. So how many matchups did you end up having going time with? Um, I won two matches, two of those matches in time. Um, and honestly, both of those matches is because my opponent kept trying to grind me out game one and they let that game take forever. And I'm like, they should have scooped sooner and they probably could have been in a better situation, right? But I get it. Sometimes, you know, it's hard for us to just want to scoop naturally. So it makes sense. 
um, for the side deck. So, um, let's see here. I have two Chaos Hunters. Uh, my friend let me borrow the second one. Uh, my teammate, shout out to David. So that's why I don't have it right now. But it's two Chaos Hunters. This comes up against Runic. This comes up against... Um, I can't think right now. The Bestials, too. Yeah, the, oh, the Bestials. Yeah, there you go. I'm like, this comes up against Runic and the Bestials, which is something that I respected. Um, Same thing with Kashira. It hurts against Kashira. They better have the triple tactics to take away. If they don't have the triple tactics, then I, it kind of just sits there. And um, yeah, it's, it's sometimes weak and they can beat over it, but they have to do all of that to get rid of that problem. They continue on, right? So it has applications. It's not the best card against Kashira, but it's still very usable and applicable. So I had to play the two Chaos Hunters. I also played a tri triple draw. Um, the triple draw was nice. I honestly, I feel like people don't like playing hand traps in uh, with a trap deck, but I feel like this is such impactful because it's literally like a turn skip sometimes. So a certain decks, you just want to make them turn skip and then it feels like you win first, right? And you kind of do your thing going first and you probably win. Um, I also played two Lava Golem um this was nice it was good i decided i didn't want to respect a rice hard pass i felt like everyone was going to go for the the zone lock but i didn't want to go sphere mode either because i felt like that there was going to be more situations where lava golem tribute 2 was going to be enough even against like an you know, rice uh lockout zone for you know a bunch was going to matter so lava golem was nice i liked that too i wouldn't change it too too evenly matched i wouldn't change that too i don't want to draw like multiples of either of these um and i felt like i had other cards that were going to be enough to when I go second as well. So I just did two, two. I did two Majesty's Fiend. So you don't need your normal summon in this deck. Any runic spell, it calls a Majesty's Fiend if you draw it. So a sample against Math Mech or against those other decks that revolve heavily, like a sprite against a monster effect. You literally set up your Elder stuff or whatever. You activate your runic spell. You tribute it. You go Majesty's Fiend pass. So now they're playing against Elder and they're playing against a Majesty's Fiend. They even you... And you leave a Majesty's Fiend, like, they sometimes they just lose off that alone. So it was still very good. It was nice. If there were one, ca one card that's cuttable in this deck, it would be the Majesty's Fiend for two Kaijus. Um, because I feel like it came up a few times where I also needed a, a little bit more removal in Kaiju. But that's fine. Um, I still think it was fine. The one a pointer with the... This is just in any control deck, I put this package. I just feel like it's it's almost uh, mandatory. And you're playing a pointer uh, in pure. Sometimes you set five pass and you really don't have a card in your hand for a pointer. Um, but with Runic, Eldritch, you'll have a card and you show it to them, whatever. If you resolve a pointer, you probably win. You're ripping that card out of their, out of their hand and then you just kind of win there. So it's really good, especially in the side game too. Um, but yeah, Joel's also good against Prosperity because they're going to side in, they're trying to dig in, and then they grab one, and then you draw them. It's really nice. So kind of that was the thing. Um, I love this deck. I think it's going to get better next format if a Rice Heart pass. If, if a Rice Heart is not really a, a thing, if Kishir is not a thing, it can get even better. Um, I'm not really too worried about the whole bestial stuff. Like, there's counterplay to that. And I think it played out really good. Um, super heavy samurais. I like if that becomes like a high play thing. This deck is really destroys that deck completely. So, by the way, also guys, if they hit tip to one, this deck's still gonna be played exactly the same. It's still gonna be really good. If they hit fountain to one, this deck's still gonna be the same. It's still gonna play really good. Um, if they hit Hugin and tip to one, that's when they're gonna have to mm, maybe the way because Hugin is so good. But like I said, Hugin turn zero just a discard to get full rotation on turn one on turn zero is just really good. So honestly, one Hugin will probably still not be a problem. So I think it's still gonna be really weird. very viable next format. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, right? All right. With that being said, thank you for sharing your deck profile. I hope you guys have a great rest yeah, of the day. Shout out to Eldridge Duelist out there. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And special shout out to the Squishmallow that's right there in the corner. Sheesh.